Guys, it's no secret. You know that I love barbell apparel. And if you have an athletic build, you're going to love them too because you'll finally be able to wear something that fits as good as it looks. Right now, Barbell Apparel is running their annual Swole Mate sale. Grab something for yourself and for your partner. Let your partner know that you noticed their hard work in the gym and give them some clothing that will help keep them motivated on workout day. For a limited time, get any of their jeans, chinos, or anything pants for just $99. That's $50 below normal. These pants are amazing. They're built to fit athletic bodies, and you'll have complete freedom of movement. Barbell's pants are as comfortable as sweatpants. The quality and construction is second to none, and they are guaranteed for a full year. Go to barbellapparel.com right now to take advantage of this special offer. Use the promo code CHAIL10 to get an additional 10% off your entire order. Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler, been announced. They're going to fight at 170. Does that mean anything? Oh, we well, bet your ass it does. Mm, mm -hmm. Particularly to me. I mean, particularly to me. I, I still cling to what the great Coach Kavanaugh said two and a half years ago. As it pertained to Conor McGregor coming back. Said I, I'm, I need to sit down with him in private. I don't need to discuss money. I don't need to discuss jabs and footwork. I need to discuss your mental frame. Why are we here? Why are we doing this? Very simple question. I don't think Coach Kavanaugh meant this to be philosophical and sophisticated. I don't think when he said it that he expected somebody like me to remember it 30 months later. I think he just set something down. Visiting, it was in passing, but I did pick up on it, and I did hold on to it, because I still want to know it, and I know how important that is. We talk about intangibles in this sport a lot, guys, right? Like, it's real easy, X's and O's, this guy's faster, this guy, you know, this guy's got a cross, he follows up with a hook, this guy finishes everything with a kick into a doubling. But then we know about the intangibles, and we also know that it's the intangibles that are going to decide the outcome of the contest, not who hits harder, and not who's faster, and not who has more experience, if he doesn't also have the eye of the tiger. He, he's got to have that grit. You're going to have five minutes or less of an athletic competition. Then you are going to be in the tough guy business. Who wants it? So that why is so important. One thing with the why. For Conor McGregor at his current age to be able to make 155 pounds is going to be a lifestyle change. Now, one of the great tricks that Conor McGregor does is cut weight, by the way. One thing that Conor's never really got credit for, he's never missed weight. Remember him at 145? Don't have any question that he can make it. What I'm sharing with you is to make it. It's going to take a minimum of 30 days where you're literally cannibalizing your body. Have you guys ever lost weight? I mean, you're cannibalizing your body. You're using your own muscles and tissues and fat to energize your body. You're literally cannibalizing yourself. It's a very weird thing to do. And you're going to do that with the stress of a fight. You're going to do that while trying to study to take somebody else on. You're going to do that while getting in two workouts a day. It is the ultimate recipe to get sick. Undersleeping, overworking, malnutrition. I'm, I'm just sharing for you. To do something like that, you have to really want it. And when Connor came back and it was against Chandler, I said, wow, he wants it. That son of a bitch wants it. He's going to go into the ultimate fighter. Now, I appreciate that that is presented as a show. But, but as a senior veteran of the Ultimate Fighter, I will just share with you, it is the ultimate training camp. That's the show. That is what the show, the Super Bowl is a show. It is the ultimate training camp. Do you want it? Do you want to be there? You're going to grab the right guys. You're going to work hard. You're going to bring your coaches in. You're going to use that facility or aren't you? Just simple questions. But to see somebody like Connor come back where you know full well he could be a world champion. You even find yourself having conversations. Well, you know, Leon's a little different than Kamar. And Connor can move this way, particularly when he switches over to Southpaw. You start finding yourself having these conversations where you're making the case where he can be world champion now. 
he could also not only never win another fight, he may never win another round. We don't know. And that's between those guys. But we can start to study it from the outside and we can start to make observation and we can start hedging our bets. So when he's coming down to 155, boom, that tells me he's coming into the ultimate training camp. They're going to call it the ultimate fire. He's coming into the ultimate training situation and he's going to cut to the weight class that requires a discipline, a dedication, and a drive. He still wants to be world champion. This is what, this is what it told me. And then I found out they're going 170. Now, I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Not at all. I'm open to the idea. I would trust that a Conor McGregor today, who's bigger and more bloated than he's ever been from not getting consistent training because of the knee injury, I would trust, or the leg injury, Getting to 55 doesn't look near as appealing as taking on a 55-pounder just doing it 170. I do understand those things, but there's still a discipline. I grew up with a guy named Doug Lee. I wrestled 365 days a year. There was never a freestyle practice tournament competition or a Greco-Roman freestyle uh, uh, practice or competition that I missed. None ever. Doug showed up for three months a year. Whenever, whenever the coach, whenever Hanga walked in the room and blew a whistle and says, uh, you wrestlers, come here, that was the day Doug went in. And whenever Hanga said, turn in your gear, you're free for the year, that is when Doug stopped. So this is real basic logic. 365 day a year guy is going to go beat three month guy. Well, not so fast. Not so fast. You ever see kids cram for a test, right? They weren't in class with you. They weren't there at 8 a.m. They weren't going to the uh, teacher visit, but they knew how to cram for a test. Doug would cram for a season. And one of the things that he would do is a specific weight class. Making a specific weight class for Doug Lee was a byproduct. A byproduct of that was a level of fitness and a conditioning. And he couldn't do it all the time. He had to do it in short sprints, but he crammed and he put it all in here and he goes out and beats everybody. But I remember guys like this. You know guys like that. You've all got your Doug Lee. You see a guy like this. And you see that he can get an intensity and a drive while still keeping a high level of motivation because he's not doing it every day to the point that it's monotonous and boring. He can do it all in a three or four month period. Conor McGregor is now going to go to 170 pounds. Now, this fight is six months away at a minimum. I mean, just by the math that, that we've laid out and read, it's six months away. I think it's more like eight months away. The point is, it's very hard to see into the future, right? I think Conor will be within striking distance. I don't think he's going to cut a single pound to get to 170 at the time it rolls around. It'll actually be 171. He'll probably tip the scale about 169 in the morning. Not have anything to eat that day, go to bed the night before, but he'll be a couple of pounds under. But it still speaks to a discipline and a work that you have the choice to do or not to do. I realize most humans are going to choose not to do it. I understand that. I'm not putting him down. I'm not teasing him. I'm sharing for you what it's going to take to come back and to have success. If you were the number one guy and you fall to number eight, you are never getting that spot back. And you will not find an example throughout history of any sport. Except for a guy that recommitted and worked harder than he has ever worked before. There is no other way to do it. There's not even luck. Not where a guy went from number one to number nine and got back to number one. You don't have an example. There's two out there, but you don't know them. I do. And those athletes both, one man, one woman, had to recommit and work harder than they ever had before. And the very first thing that I'm seeing is there's an opportunity to work hard, get to 155, not work as hard, go to 170. And we chose 170. Tell me there's not a lot on that. I would listen to other things you might tell me, such as you don't think it's going to affect the outcome of the fight. I'll listen to that, that it's not going to change the odds of the fight. That doesn't make Chandler more dangerous on his feet or more effective on the ground. I'll listen to all of those things. But I'm also going to observe there was a choice. 
to work hard and go into a division where you would like a ranking and you'd like to climb to the top or not work as hard and go into a division that you don't plan to stay in, you don't plan to contest, and you're not working on a ranking. These boys are going to fight at 170. 